Yeah, so uh, it's important to remember the timelines of implementation as we go through this. So we, for the last few years before we implemented with, with IRIS, we sat right around a 60% screening rate for our, our diabetic patients. Uh, and and we, we really had a hard time getting above that. And, and some of it was just uh, patient noncompliance. Some of it was getting the information from local optometrists. Some of it was just not putting it in the right place in the EMR. There were lots of little pieces that that didn't work well, that, that resulted in lower than lower performance than we'd have anticipated or wanted. Uh, so as we went through this process, we were curious to see how we were gonna perform and what change we'd see. So we went live uh, in October, uh, September, October of 2018. And, and that's the blue line that you see on your screen. And so as you can see over the course of the year, we'd kind of hovered right around that 50 to 60% mark. And, and within the first, couple months of going live, we were able to screen a couple thousand patients and get up to a 72% screening rate by the end of the year. Uh, we were pretty excited about that. We felt like we'd made a difference, that we had seen the performance come out the way we were anticipating uh, and, and wanted to, to see what the next year would bring. So uh, the red line is 2019. Uh, and our goal here is to achieve five-star compliance normally across the CMS uh, star ratings. And, and so, uh, as you can see in, in 2019, we, we hovered around that 72, 73, 74% and finished the year up above 80% uh, and, and really we're on track to continue that work through the beginning of this year. Uh, we were screening more than a thousand patients a month uh, in January, February, and, and the first part of March, we were on track to do that again. And then when the pandemic hit in 2020, uh, it really had an impact on our ability to screen in the practices because we weren't seeing patients in the practices. Uh, and I think at the, you know, in the last two weeks of March, we screened 49 patients. Uh, and that was a little unsettling to us, but we knew we weren't seeing patients in the practices. Uh, and then as we've opened up and, and gone back into more traditional office visits, uh, we're now back on pace with where we were before with screening over a thousand patients a month using, using the technology. Uh, and, and it's been really successful for us. It's been a, a huge benefit to be able to see these numbers move. Uh, it, uh, I'll tell you, one of, the, one of the fun parts is we, we had this in our physician incentive plan, obviously, and, and that's, some, that's a reason why we got a lot of buy-in behind it and trying to get people engaged in it. But I had a physician tell me, uh, well, I wouldn't have been so upset that you put retinopathy screening on our incentive plan if you guys would have told me you were going to do all the work for me. Uh, and, and that was a that's a big win for us, you know, when, when oh my gosh, we got it. Uh, and so, yeah, this doesn't take physician time, really. It takes MA and, and support staff time. Uh, they're the ones who do a lot of the work. The physician is the one who, who kind of sells it a lot of the time and says, you're here, let's get this, let's make it happen. Uh, but, but after that, once the patient agrees to it, they're on to the next patient and, and it, it falls on the support staff to make sure it gets done. And so uh, I, I expect that in, in 2021, will surpass our, our performance in 2019 and, and be up above the 80, 85% screening rate, uh, and, which would be spectacular for us. We'd feel really proud about the work that we've done to, to identify and close some of these care gaps and, and provide good care to patients.